I mean, the, the, the stability of this region, there is no facet joint, there is no disc, uh, there is only a piece of bone called odontoid and surrounded by ligament and posterior C. But there is no ligamentous injury. It's a, a, a fracture, uh, type 2, posterior displaced, typical good indication for screw fixation. If you go posterior, it's too much. But as, as Mehmet said, What's fanning? It's, it's a normal distance, this. When you mean the, the distance between C2, C1 and C2? It's normal. This is normal. Uh, you and me, we are the same. <laughs> I hope, I hope. <laughs> and anterior border of C2 here. Yeah. Is it, did, well, while he was putting the screw, yeah. is there a big fracture C2? No, 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 no. But this is because you have a cut inside the screw, so you, it always looks like too near the cortex. But the, the main problem is, as, as Mehmet said, is, is pushing up. He's creating more instability with the screw than without the screw. You, if you look to the line of a fracture after compared to uh, before, it's, it's wider. So it's, he's pushing the odontoid up, so the instability is, is more. So it, uh, but this is a pro it's technical failure. And the other example, case two, is also typical that we should not put screw in the patient who had anterior displacement. We, we have to repeat this to make sure that everybody understands that screw fixation in an anteriorly displaced uh, fracture is nonsense. I, and it's typical. I showed one case, you showed another one, it's typical. And here, I, I think we, we should not virtually talk about ligamentous injury. Uh, which, uh, which ligament is injured? Uh, you can go to MRI if you have any doubt, but this is typical uh, bone fracture, but because all relies on ligaments, it's, it, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, instability due to, to bone, bone mal, uh, non-union. Non in, in, in this kind of patient, what I would have done, it's type two fracture. I will tell my patient, you know what? Pseudarthrosis, we can treat you conservatively. You have to wear either a Philadelphia with a frontal uh, attachment or halo vest for three months. It might fail. If it fails, surgery is more difficult, but could be done. Up to you, you choose. And yeah. <coughs> what, what about the lax and big bicortical uh, way? Excuse me? Uh, in the first operation, if the surgeon used lax and bi bicortical, maybe the result can change. It will fail. It yeah. will fail because the odontoid is, is, the tendency is to go anterior. It's a typical case. The, the, uh, it, it will fail even if you are bicortical because the, the odontoid will go anterior and the body of C2 will be uh, fractured. Yeah. With the In case two, go, go back, go back. No. Yeah. <coughs> because I, uh, we have to look. Is it a leg screw, it's or it's a no. fully, it's fully threaded it's screw? It's a leg screw, but if you see that screw, it's quite far out. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. <coughs> because the 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 head of the screw has to be against the bone to 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 lag it. I mean, to I don't know how. It's it's a carpentry work. It's carpentry work. I, so we have to during your surgery when you tighten your screw, you 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 see your odontoid uh, uh, closing, yeah. closing. Uh, Doctor Nadir, very short comment. Yes. yes. Okay. It should have been a shorter screw, so it could have produced a leg effect. Yeah. The problem in odontic fractures is the fragmented part is pulled to, toward the superior by a uh, epical ligament. This is the problem. Therefore, we should uh, pull it to, uh, to the C2. This is the, uh, the main problem. And in this case, we have two problems. The first problem, treated, treated portions should be in the fragment in the upper part. Totally it should be there. And the second one, the, the proximal part, I, I mean uh, the lower part of the screw is 
outside and yeah. touch to the C3. And with any flexion, it may complicate, may uh, injure the uh, construct. Well, so again, he also had a posterior fixation. Then, so I'll just show the last case. This is a guy, eight-year-old kid with a traumatic irreducible AD. And the surgeon did a posterior C1, C2 fixation. Patient did not wake up after surgery. And the scan showed this. It's a complete infarct. Post-op CT showed the screws going through both the vertebral foramen. Now, what is the lesson learned from this? Firstly, the surgeon should have recognized the vertebral artery injury on the first side when it happened. It is inconceivable that how could he not recognize the vertebral artery injury? If you are penetrating the injury, there will be a gush of blood. And if there is an injury, then you don't go to the opposite side. You just stop there. Put in the screw, perhaps to tamponade the bleeding do a galleys or brooks and then come out and then do an angiogram. So one has to be very careful of the vertebral artery injuries. So when indicated it is a safe technique, I personally prefer C1, C2 trans, uh, not transarticular, I use a polyaxial screw dot construct and uh, depending on the anatomy of the patient, various choices are available. I, I, I started using more and more uh, this uh, Laminar screws also in two patients. So that's also a good technique. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the last presentation of the session, Dr. Mohammed Al-Tabarek.